You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we're going to bring you something from off the press. Uh, we sincerely apologize. It's starting a little bit late today, but we're going to cover as many headlines as possible. We are glad to have uh, with us architect Ezekiel Nyaitok, a public affairs analyst that will be talking with us from Aquaibom. Good morning and welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Tanyok. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it's unfortunate I called you a Tanyo. <laughs> why, why did that enter my head? I don't know. Ezekiel Nyaitok. Okay. Um, let's begin with uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, we're not beginning with the boldest uh, headline there. I'm, I'm going up uh, the very top uh, story there. Uh, the, very, the story at the very top, rather. Oyetola Lalong Bagudu, 16 others make second ministerial list. Uh, remember that the president sent in uh, a list of ministers or would-be ministers to the National Assembly just before uh, the deadline that he was given. Now the second list uh, has been sent to the National Assembly and Oyetola Lalong Bagudu and 16 others make the second ministerial list. So it's... Uh, it's a governor's affair or something, I don't know. would like to have your take on what is happening. The list so far that has been sent uh, to the National Assembly, how you assess it, and if you feel that list has the people that will drive the economy, drive the nation, and everything to where this administration is telling us that they are going to take us. Okay, again, thanks for having me. And... Um Maybe it's as well that the video is not working this morning because um, I'm not sure that I would have been, my look would, uh, would have been pleasant. <laughs> so I think it's uh, almost fine. I actually feel very um, uncomfortable. I, I feel very sad. And I think of the future of this country. And um, I just keep asking God to help me to keep hope alive. Why do I say this? I am somebody who contested the governorship of my state. And one of the most important things, and I kept saying to everybody at every time, is like, politics is a game of interest, and the winners must be allowed the latitude to salvage their victory. So politicians... Let's have an understanding of how I can take care of your interests and make you to enjoy or savor your victory. First, one thing I will not compromise and I will not accept for any reason in the world is my cabinet. You must allow me that free hand to choose the maybe 13 or 15 people that I will have as my Commissioner, there's so many other things you, will, you can have that allow me to choose my commissioners. Number two, none of my commissioners must be any political leader in any way. You must not get into being the political leader of this place or that place. You must be removed completely from politics and give me what I want because I have the foundational understanding that my government is going to be as strong or as weak as the quality of my cabinet. So you can understand how I feel when I see the people, based on my understanding of what a cabinet is. Look at what is happening. We were told that our president, oh, is a genius when it comes to putting together a team, you know, to drive a system. And we waited for the whole of 60 days. We couldn't even get them all. Now we are having what I don't know whether it's the last batch or the next batch. They're all considered 47. Look at the number of people that are there. Do the analysis of the people. You have all these friends from our governors. I don't mind if you're a former governor, but please let me do an analysis, a synthesis of the state that you govern. And you were such a bright star 
that bringing you to the national was like something that we would say, wow, this is great. I'll give you one example. When Baba Tunde Fashola left Lagos, everybody hailed him. So when he came to the center, forget about how he performed thereafter. Then every Nigerian said, this is one governor that should be, you know, to continue on the Nigeria project. Please, of all the governors that are on the list, I want somebody to point out three of those that were real shining stars that we were excited to have in the cabinet. So at the end of the day, my brother, we ended up having one of the biggest, I think the largest cabinet, because as of now, it is 47. Now, Buhari had uh, 42. The Constitution demands to police 37. 36 states and the federal capital territory. And now we've added 10. And we don't even know the rationale behind it, whether it is to, you know, make food for the boys or because there are certain exigencies. We are talking of lean government. We're expanding the government. So there's a lot of things that my brain just can't uh, put together. So I'm trying to understand exactly what is what's happening. Okay, um, let's take another very small headline there at the, uh, the corner. Uh, the um, story is on page 11 of the punch. It's about Niger. We're leaving Nigeria. We're going to Niger. Let, let's just take the headlines together. Niger, Nigeria cuts power supply. ECOWAS vows to confront Junta. Uh, so far, we've heard the, the stand of Niger and the possible countries that will support them should there be a confrontation. We've also heard what uh, ECOWAS uh, community is saying about uh, what is happening in Niger, how they have to confront Niger and they have to reinstate the, the democratically elected um, president of that country. I don't know. How do you see the, uh, uh, the actions of ECOWAS, you know, and the response coming from Niger and Mali, Burkina Faso, and some other countries that are sympathetic with the cause of Niger? Yeah, uh, great question. But I think that there are certain things that we take our eyes off the ball. We do a lot of analysis and um, things talk around the event of uh, Niger. But we need the fundamentals. Mm. Number one, what happened in Niger? What happened in Niger is that a democratically elected government failed the expectation of the people and created an opportunity for an opportunity or the opportunity to strike. Now, you want to go in and help the people. But please tell me the reaction of the people in Niger. Are they intense? Are they unhappy? Are they livid? Are they so angry and taken to the streets and say, we don't want these people, we want that democracy? Or are they pouring into the streets and say, we know we don't like this, but it's better than what we had. Unless we realize that, then we miss the possibility, God forbid, of Niger happening to Nigeria. And two things we must look at concerning Niger, because there are so many things I can look at. When you talk of boots on the ground, who are going, those going to provide the boots on the ground? We Nigerians that we are facing all sorts of problems, that we don't have enough money to do our subsidies, are we the same ones? going to fund the commerce? That's number one. Number two, when do the, where do all these events usually end? On the negotiation table. We know that there are people like the the, the, the Southern of Sokoto, like all the other Iranians that are there, or know that have relationships with this. Wasn't it the first thing we should have done 
for us to intervene where we will eventually end at the ever year that will be to make sure that we are able to network these people and arrange the situation in the soonest possible time. Or we hoping that we should let the situation escalate so that maybe somewhere along the line in this uh, problem in Nigeria has failed for peace, and then Wahala comes to Nigeria, and then instead of emergency, we begin in Nigeria, so that we do not have to be paneled going to a logical conclusion, so that we are able to do where we are moving from, from here. You know, the, 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 the heart of man is so dark and evil that you can't really tell where any man is coming from. So, why don't we have a minister of external affairs? Who would be the one to intercept and check of all these things? Are all these details possibly deliberate? These are conspiracy theories that you cannot dismiss with a wave of the hand. My appeal to Mr. President is that he should know that people are suffering in this country. Enough of the policy. I am concerned. I'm for that. There's a lot of analysis you see about Niger. There are things that you have to make other things. I could actually take certain aspects. The goal is like, it's like onion. Peel the different layers and get to the bottom of the matter. Of all these analysis, oh, uh, which countries are in support, which are about the issues, man. The issues are what happened in the what's the foundation? Failure of leadership. What is happening in Nigeria? Are we excited? Are we happy? Are we seeing the dividends of democracy? Are we proud of democracy? Are we seeing the governance that really is the ground running? And looking at the essence of government and governance, taking chapter 2, section 4, section 2, section 2, B. I say that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Is that what we're having in Nigeria? The right. analysis of the case is only important to the extent that it affects the economy positively. And as of today, we must know that our elected government and the existential threat of being rejected by the people, except they do the rightful thing now. Okay. Uh, well, today is um, the is it the second day or the third day of August? Um, it's September, October, November. Three months from now, three months and three days. Paul Bia uh, will be in office for. <laughs> he has been in office, in fact, for since uh, uh, 1982, and nobody is talking about it. And if he's ousted tomorrow, uh, the people would say the. The, the worst democracy is better than the best um, military rule and all that. They, our, our leaders seem not to look at the issues like you have just said. And now, whenever the consequences come up, they begin to talk about it. I do hope that they will look into issues like this and see that these coups will not happen again so that people will get good governance and know the true uh, benefits of democracy. But talking about the benefit of democracy and still staying with the Punch newspaper, uh, we have yes. these very bold uh, headlines on the Punch, and the headline is talking about the minimum wage. Banks, offices shot amid rallies, labor demands 200,000 wage. We hear that the labor had a meeting with uh, uh, the president and, um, or the presidency, and a lot of things were discussed. But now, we are being stared in the face by the reality on ground. Labor is demanding 200,000 Naira wage amid all the things that uh, they are also demanding for. Is this really the solution, raising the money that we are being paid or uh, civil servants are being paid or some other things can be done to make the life of Nigerians better? You see, when the fundamentals are weak, the results cannot be any better. We have a government that does not let us understand what those fundamentals are. You see, if I tell you to spend a million dollars and satisfaction, without thinking, 
the first thing is for you to say, wow, if I have a million dollars, that will solve my problem. And if I decide. But if you start back to think, you realize that this million dollars is supposed to get you satisfaction and that there are chances that it will not. Whereas if you throw satisfaction, it means that you have won no chance of losing. Why am I saying this? A civil servant wants more money to be able to afford health care, afford housing, afford education. So the question is, if they have this money, will they have those things? Mm. And the answer is maybe not. Why? Because when they have this increase in money, then inflation will set you. What you used to use 50,000 naira for, and hoping that the other one 50,000 naira will see the balance, that housing will move to 100,000. And then what happens? 50,000 has been taken off. Healthcare will move that way. Everything will move that way. Education will move that way. To the end that your 100, your 200,000 in two years is equivalent to your current amount today. So what progress have you done? None. But if we have government that know and understand the essence of social infrastructure, they understand housing at a basic level, they understand food security, they understand health care as basic necessities, and work to provide those basic necessities, then you realize that instead of the 50,000 naira that you are paying for education, you are now paying just to pay that really is additional three thousand thirty thousand for you. You know, basically that's the, the thinking. If we have a government that is able to provide the social infrastructure, it means that the citizen is spending less. It means that the money that they have they have more value for the money that they have. So increasing the money and setting the risk of inflation, making nonsense of the money, exchange rate. Moving from 200 to 800 naira to a dollar within a span of less than five years is unacceptable. So we are not going to keep increasing the value of our money increasing, and we don't even have the money to increase. This month we're thirty thousand, we could not pay. I mean, how do you, how do you, a man who not live ten days and you want him to live? I mean, are you thinking? Or is there something we don't So oh, my brother, you know, all this talk and that is without addressing maybe because of architects and understand the meaning of the word foundation. You know? The Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Right now we are not facing the foundations and the fundamentals of governance. So doing analysis and doing all sorts of throwing money at everything and throwing money at all the things we the answer. It's about being honest. Being honest. This is state in Nigeria. Our leaders are not to stay with us. Mm. They are too concerned about their policy, self preservation. Leadership is sacrifice. Leadership is sacrifice. That's why one of the greatest mistakes that has been made in history by a lady that said, If I perish, I perish. Okay. No, but now when everybody is a bloody contest. That's okay. We have to do that. We have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do this. Damn all the consequences. This governance for two years. Okay. After two years, start the case of second. Okay. Uh, you know, well, let, let, let's 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 move two away. Two years. Work so hard. You know, that after two years, you would have been on auto two. And second term, we just begging you for it. But you are starting now to see the consequences. And people are now holding you up, and if you don't do this, look at what's going on in the city. You know? Look at the, they are plotting here, the six man, whether he is or he's not, he will come from Kano and Sema, so that we're able to hold the population of Kano. You know, the man is plot. 
at the end of the day, it's God that will decide things. Okay, well, uh, you've already mentioned Kanu. Um, uh, today, uh, supposedly, the APC NEG will ratify Ganduje as uh, pr chairman of the APC. What uh, a man to give Nigeria. Yeah, well, what a man <coughs> to give Nigeria. Well, he didn't. He didn't. He failed in the ministerial he, list. They didn't. He, they didn't um, uh, end up pass him. The DSS failed him, as it were, and now he's going to be the APC chairman. So. Well, that's very interesting. There's also a headline in The Guardian now. We are talking Guardian. Uh, cabinet size near 70 as Tinubu ignores call for lean government. Uh, it is showing that um, I will do something differently. may not be the real thing uh, that is on his mind uh, right now. Uh, but um, we are also looking at some other uh, headlines also in, uh, the, in, the, in The Guardian. I don't know... Maybe you want to comment more on uh, the fact that Ganduji is going to be the chairman of APC. You started talking a little bit about it, uh, but let's just continue with that uh, briefly. Uh, what do you think? This is someone who was you know, screened out by the DSS, and then there's still this case that um, his dollar case is still in the court, even though the courts have said that he should not be probed and all that. I don't, I don't know why they keep doing that, that you, you can walk to the court and say, court, please stop them from probing me even though there are evidences against me and all that, and the court accepts to do that. I don't know how the law works, but uh, let me leave that for another day. So what do you feel about if that Ganduji uh, um, finally becomes let, the let, chairman let, of ABC? Let's tell you something. It's, um, this is my, my conspiracy theory. There has been this um, seeming romance between the president and uh, Mr. Kwang Kwaso. Now, that romance seems largely to the extent of second term policies, where Kano is absolutely important to be in the hands of the current um, administrator. So that between Kano and Lagos and Port Harcourt, they will get a substantial number of votes. Now, for that to be, means that when you get um, a man like Kwang Kwaso, then there may be a threat to a man like Shetima. Because if you look at Shetima's control of the North and votes from the North, you discover that not be as impressive as a cynical would be as the politician. So the question is, what do we do? Chinubu says, let me romance with Frank Kwaso. The Shima says, no way, you can't do that. And for you to neutralize Kwang Kwaso, let's see what we can get at. And probably the biggest thing we can do is to get a chairman from Kwang. I don't buy, I don't, I don't have anything to take that uh, place. But my question is, why can we get? I know he's not been, best of my knowledge, convicted by the state court of competence, conviction, I'm not aware. But I know that in the court of public opinion, the Gandola story is not something you can deceive with a wave of the hand. So why do you insist on it? And there's also the story. I don't know how to oppose that he was supposed to be one of the, the, one of the, the ministers from the North, but that the DSS failed to play. If that is the case, again, what sort of faith do you want to see Nigerians from your party? I think there's something fundamentally wrong with APC. I don't know what they are doing. But I would wish that a man like Mr. Uh, Tinubu would just forget this second term state. Damn all the consequences and work for Nigeria. And the God that sees his heart and commits him will know how to turn things around. At the end of the day, he can do all those your political calculations and everything. The first thing is that your breath is not in the hand. And the Bible says, whether you believe it or it says the heart of the king is in the hand. And that, like what time did you get from the sun in whichever direction it is? And he's the one that sets up kings and brings that king. Oh, 
I think that we should fear God and work to serve humanity and allow God to take that ultimate decision of how to reward us. You just talked about the fact that he should forget about the second term and all that. Um, this gives me um, uh, an idea that you think that the second term will uh, depend on how much the people love whoever is going to be voted in. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I'm telling you that after what happened this time, um, INEC chairman will not be there to conduct the seven election. I can say that with every person of the country. Yeah, yeah. But, but the person our... that will be there will be someone that will be selected by this government, more or less. Plus, I they come. I they come. I they come. Who selected I need to say, man? Why not the good luck, Jonathan? Mm. Only that one. See, this government, something like this, continues like this, in less than one year, it will be the most, most, Popular government, but I want to believe better things of them that they have said it, and that before the same, Nigeria will start to see what we are not seeing. It's the positive. If that is the case, then no problem. But if it continues this way, if you like appoint the NX chairman, the office of the CDC is becoming very strong, and some of us are starting to energize that office of the CDC. We are, I'm starting to take up real, serious, you know, enlightenment on the office of your right, so that I want all the 20 to 27 to take a bold decision. Something had stuck in Nigeria by the OPN movement. We want to move that ideology from a person, a state ideology, because as of now, we are linking the obedience the ideology to be a of it, which is not really right. We have to come to see the spirit of us to be in ACC, that spirit to be in CDC, that spirit to be in AD. And what is the spirit? The spirit of good governance, the spirit of square in square, perfect in round, the spirit of the love is the God. Let us have the right people. When that spirit has been captured and made a personal mantra, then 2027 is going to be a different board altogether. Mm. Uh, well, I don't know. While, while you're doing that, even though this is not headline, let's digress a little bit. While, while you're doing that to give enlightenment to the people, what are you doing to improve the security? Because if you see this, the uh, Office of the Citizen, as you're calling it, was, was very, very active during the uh, presidential election and or the national elections that is the presidential and national assembly elections so but when it came to the state elections when the governors and the state's house of assemblies uh, members were were elected the spirit died down a little bit because of some of the things that we saw um, after the presidential election and so many others so do you think that spirit can come back just by telling the people they know their rights, because it's like telling me that I should never allow a policeman, for instance, who is holding a gun to search me because it's my right not to be searched or take my phone to be taken from me. I might exercise my right and lose my life. So Nigerians are afraid of losing their lives just because they want to exercise their rights. So what are you doing to address, while you're doing the enlightenment of the people on the kind of rights that belong to them, what are you doing to improve the security situation in such a way that people will be confident enough to stand for their rights and by their rights? Let me, let me, let me tell you something. A lot of times, we lose moments. You know, in the Bible, they talk about things like Kairos moment. Mm. You know, those, 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 what the Bible says, expecting day. Things happen in Nigeria, we don't see. One of the things that happened in Nigeria was enter. Yeah. So we try to dismiss it with the hand. The any man that has understand of the time of the time will understand that there were conflicts that make all about enter. Second moment of the series and several was the Labour Party. It was incomprehensible. It was unfathomable. 
that anybody where Tinubu decides to run for president will as much as think, not even PDP, would as much as think of winning the God. And you think about it, put take your mind back. Nobody would think in any calculation factor that Tinubu would contest the governorship. A PDP would even think, they would think they have malaria, to think that they would think they would. But guess what? It will be the labor movement. Big Tinubu in Lagos. Let us know that times come in calculation. Nigerians are afraid to die. Nigerians are afraid to die. Has trapped themselves with bombs and kill. Oh no, we love life too much. That's what we thought until bombing became so rampant. You know, <laughs> it's sick that we thought, oh, we love our life so much. We they started exploding themselves. Let's try that. Let me tell you something. A time comes. And if that time has come, if that time has come, the Nigerians that think are afraid will stand up and they will make a bold statement. Mm. Even look at yesterday, the labor movement. How many people dismiss the wave of the hand? Oh, it will not work. No, ladies, people, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, I was there in the front in a I had all my. It's unfortunate that the security is not working today. Because you would have seen me in my school with the Galia, with the cap sent to me by the NLC president himself. I was there in front as we marched the government house of Akwai State. And I want to commend the governor of Akwai because he didn't allow what happened in the National Assembly to happen. Actually, came out in person. He did not send the boys. came out in person. He addressed Lagos. And he took time to explain certain things to them. And so he gave me 10 days. You know, I know me and him, we are in the fact that we are in the, in the appeal court. But you see, being in the appeal court team does not mean that if I see something good, I will not say this is good. If something bad, I will say this is bad. I think it was very, very good and very, very good of him. He came and talked to the people, told them what he was doing, set up the panel, and for 10 days, and everybody made very happy, you know. So what am I trying to say? That where protest was very successful. And the crime of supporting that the president decided to meet them, which was a very wise thing, and I commend the president at the first, to call the labor leaders and talk to them. And give them the final, you know, confidence. Because that's the final box. Once the governor speaks, once the president speaks, those are the finals that is so we say uh, make a go check make sure God talk and go content. In our language they say I say I use for easy job of care. That means the 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 proverb, the man that is said does not say it's proverb. You know? He cannot talk boldly. If them say them say they will the master can make to fight and you can ask him direct questions. Okay. If you ask for Jabi Abdullah any question he says I'll I'll get it across to the press. Yeah, because the president was there, he gave answers on the spot. And people were happy. They went back, had their meeting. So I, I mean, the, you know, it was a labor civil society thing. You know, the okay. thing was just labor. And yeah. I want to commend the civil society for that fight. Because we mm -hmm. were left to be able alone and for negotiate. So another emphasis for us to talk for ourselves. It, because the civil society was able to work with the neighbors, they were able to bring up what was holistic, and as a result, we were able to avoid any divergence of the civil society for people already related to our own thing. Okay. So, so far, I think that things are moving well by the sector. Okay, architect, uh, that's where we have to drop it. We, we are we're glad, like you said, that the president called the labor okay. and they talked. Okay. and. One of the things that um, was promised, or the things that were promised, 
Um, yeah. But Harcourt Refinery will commence operation in December this year. That's what Tinubu promised the labor leaders in that discussion that they had. And we also know that the marketers are saying that when there is local refining, uh, cost of PMS will come back to as low as 70 naira. We, we, have, we have started applauding uh, in, in advance, even though we have not seen it. We hope that it, it does happen. A lot of things that we've heard that will happen did not happen. Let's see how this one is going to happen. We'll wait and see. But we'd like to thank you for coming on the show this morning, architect Ezekiel Nyaito. Thank you so much thank for Thank you for us having me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was uh, architect Ezekiel Nyaito, public affairs analyst, talking to us from Akwaibom State. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll take our last segment and wrap up the show. Stay with us.